first of all, let me welcome all of you. Um, I'll pass the microphones over to the, the DG um, of uh, NDE um, to give you an update on um, implementation of the programs across the country. Um, we are here to give um, Nigerians an update as to how far We are here to give Nigerians an update as to uh, how far this very, very all-important program that is very close to the heart of Mr. President um, has been going, what has been done so far, challenges we are facing in some states, how we intend to address those challenges, and how we are working um, closely with um, the implementing agency, the National Director of Employment, to ensure we have a very smooth um, operation across the country. This is um, one of the biggest uh, operation that the agency will undertake uh, within a short period of time because it will take place simultaneously. It's not that we have not been doing projects across the country before, but um, we have been doing them uh, sequentially. Maybe one this month, next month we'll go to the next state, on and on. But this is the first time that will be done simultaneously in all the local governments in the country. So it requires tenacity and um, of purpose. So I'll pass on the mic to the, the DG um, to give you a full update on how far we have gone, and I will also round off uh, these remarks. And that will be the end of the press conference. We'll take questions. The situation, the state of play is regarding preparation for the commencement of this very important program. Um, let me reiterate one or two things he said to clarity. He said clearly that there will be an implementation committee, and that is correct. There will be implementation committees at different levels to ensure the proper documentation of those who have been selected. They will work closely with the banks. They will also select the projects to be done, and they will also go ahead and supervise the work that will, the different works that will be done in the various local governments. In other words, we don't just want to give people money and sit down here in Abuja and assume that those uh, community services are going on everywhere. We don't want to assume that. We are going to have actual people on the ground, a committee, implementation committee, supervising this work. Over the next few days, the DG and myself will put our heads together and we announce these uh, committees across um, the country. Uh, again, he has talked about the banks. Why we are doing that is that Mr. President has um, given a clear directive for this program to be totally free from fraud or free of fraud everybody will be paid by his bank account and BVN if you don't have a BVN so you don't even have not only bank account you must have a BVN so you don't, cannot be paid twice you can't open an account under two different names everybody will, biometrics will be taken by the banks and to ensure that you don't have two different accounts Within the next you know, few weeks, we'll do that. The banks, we are going to conclude with the banks in the next few days and, of course, also address the press like this with the banks to ensure and, uh, that um, we are transparent and for the banks to tell Nigerians exactly how they want to go about this in all the local governments uh, in the country. Again, Mr. President also directed that we should use uh, technology to also monitor the process. So apart from this people you see who will be on the ground implementation committees in the different states and local governments and wards, we are also going to set up right here in Abuja between the DG's office and our office a website, an interactive website. The interactive website will be such that you will have the names of all the implementation committee members there so people can easily reach them on their phone numbers in the different states to say, who is the one supervising in this particular local government? If you download, you will see his name there and phone number. You can reach him to say there's a problem here going on. You said, and if we, in fact, the projects are going to be done in every local government will be uploaded. So the public will be very clear. There will be no uh, hanky-panky, no hide-and-seek. Every local government can see, can open and see that these are the community service to be done in my local government and the, the clear addresses of those jobs to be done. So if you say, for example, we are going to uh, execute certain drainage uh, work along the Batri Kafi Road, let's say Kafi Road 
in particular local government. Everybody knows where that place is. The locals will go there and say, nothing is going on here. And then these NDE people, they have published that something will be done here. Why is this? So they will be very, very free to interact with us, send emails to us, you know, and say, or, or contact even the local uh, supervisor whose name will be there too, to say, what is going on here? And send me, then we will get in touch with also the local supervisor so that there's a problem in that particular local government. Why is the work not being done? So we don't want even the citizens to shortchange government because government is also digging deep to look for these resources to pay these people. It's huge at this time for government to make this money available. Thankfully, I think maybe the DG forgot to tell you that the federal government is in the process of releasing these funds and then um, we're about to begin preparations, including um, how we'll get the tools across to most of these local governments for them to equip them to be ready uh, for this very all-important um, assignment. Um, I guess we've covered all areas. There are certain local governments. Let me just also clear these challenges we faced in certain areas because it's important that we do this. We did not authorize any state selection committee to print forms to give to persons. But that does not mean we, we will nullify what they have done. Those forms they did was only a local arrangement for them to collect names from people. Do you understand me? Those local, they're just like local arrangements. Some did not use forms, some use sheets, um, uh, lists to go around the local government. But the most important thing is to upload those names in the soft copies we give to them. So no matter how you collect the names, it's irrelevant. Whether you collect them by giving out forms or you go around with lists or biro and all, but we have given them spreadsheets to ensure that those names are entered in those special spreadsheets, soft copies. I hope you understand me. Now, it is those soft copies now, 1-1,000, one, one that will be transmitted to the banks and the implementation committee and the state coordinators of NDE for them to supervise the registration of those people in those banks. The authentic and official forms are the one the DG told you about that have been printed with special security marks. Those forms are going straight to the banks, to the individual banks, and they will now be transmitted because each local government has special serial numbers. So we are not going to do like on serialized ballot boxes, no. Every local government is clearly stated and one to 1,000 forms for those local governments. So you will not, you will, no, no local government will shortchange the other in this program, none. Because every local government in this country, all the 774 local government, they have special marks and serial numbers and clearly marked at the top of the form, Etiosa, Uwe, as the case may worry South, worry not local government. You cannot carry one form to the other local government, for one local government to the other. So like the DG said, these forms will now go to the banks. The banks will take these different local government forms to their branches in those local governments. And then we will make announcement in the next few days. So that all those who have been selected, go to your local branches of these banks. Register. They will clearly, so that our forms will not be lost. If you give these forms out to uh, people to go and uh, for people to fill and return, them, all of them will not come back. They will tear them. You fight, they will fight and tear them, and our forms will go. So we we'll make sure that these forms remain in the banks. They go there. When your name appears on the spreadsheet that have been returned by the uh, state coordinators and his chairman to Ross. If your name appears there, you will now be registered in the bank with your passport and an account number opened. If you have before, they will link it to the SPW accounts and give you, uh, you know, a special um, account number for this purpose. I hope it's clear. So then the banks will now share that data with us. When they finish registration, the hard copies will come back to us to the archives of the uh, ND. And then, of course, the soft copy will go to the Account General of the Federation and all for payment. So that's how we intend to, to go about this. We are ready. We are almost there. And uh, with prayers to Almighty God and your support, we'll be inviting you all over the country to see when we begin this work and how much impact it has on Nigerians. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, my name. My name. Let me just uh, clarify one thing. You see, there is a lot of misconception 
about this 774 special public works because of the amount of money involved. This special public works is far beyond paying 1,000 young men and women 20,000 naira every month for the period of three months. What government is trying to do is to kill six beds with one stone. You will all agree with me that even the developed nations, their economy is being driven by microeconomy. You can imagine what 52 billion will do microeconomically at the local government level. Because this is the biggest single employment drive, grassroots community based job ever carried by any government in the history of this country. So the first bet is the issue of microeconomy, which in turn will affect our macroeconomy. So we're talking of wealth creation and a lot of money in circulation. Then bet number two. Mr. President categorically stated, we are all very much our issue of insecurity that we are facing. Wherever you have gathering of young men and women that are more than 100, you should engage a preacher within that community to preach to them in their own local language on the importance of living in peace and harmony and self-reliance. Bet number three, in NDE, on that small scale enterprises, we have a unit called BBT unit, Basic Business Training Unit. The fact that we are redeploying three of our staffs to each local government, they will engage them in what we call BBT training. They will talk to them on the importance of managing their mega resources so that they can add up to their various businesses. If you are a farmer, 60,000 Naira, you can use part of it to buy a brand new water pumping machine which will help you to yield more as far as product is concerned. Then, bed number four, that is what we call community supervision. We'll talk to them. The reason why these critical federal government infrastructures were situated in your community is because the government recognized your importance. So even after this three months period, please look after them. The other one is this. We are not going to allow these young men just to go like that after the three months period. We are going to engage most of them as AEWs, agricultural extension workers. And you know because of the value chain in agriculture, you can start with 10 and end up with 100. Honorable Minister is aware we have already carried some studies immediately after this is approved. For example, in Karfi, Kano State, there are, there's an area that has tens of thousands of hectares of land. The same thing in Misobochi, the same thing in, uh, in, uh, in Gombe, sorry, in, 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 in Yobi, this tractor assembling plant, there is a vast land attached to it. And Dr. Mbata, who is in charge of REP, Rural Employment Promotion, as a department, he also got the same data for us in other parts of this country, like in the old states, Oyo, Ondo, Oshun, Ogun, and the rest of them. It involves just 100,000 to hire a land of one hectare from clearing up to plantation and cultivation, and the profit margin is about 125,000 naira, which is good. So we are not just going to let them go just like that, because I know people ask questions. What of after? the three months period. We are going to engage most of them as agricultural extension workers. And in fact, that's what brought Gombe State Governor to NDE's headquarters because he has similar vision. So gentlemen, it's not just paying 60,000 Naira to an unemployed Nigerian youth within the period of three months just for clearing gutter. There is more to these special public works. And one other thing we forgot to mention, although it will be there in the form, yes, we are very much our, our brothers and sisters, people living with uh, special needs. Yes, 
certain degree of disability, you know, because of the nature of the job, is also taken into consideration. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. So those local governments without, those local governments without uh, banks, they, are, they will take an officer there, or officers, one or two officers, and lodge maybe in the public primary school or the local government secretariat there for a period of two weeks and register all those in those particular local government. We've, we've worked all that out. And uh, when, we are, when we are addressing the press with the banks, yeah. they will give you those operational details. But we've worked that out. Of course, we have been begging many of the states to select more women because women manage money more than men. I see women saying yes there now. They manage money. If you give a woman 60000 within three months, she will not go and drink burukutu, like most of us we do. Or not me. I don't take that for her. Most of you, Like most of you we do. <laughs> you go and drink burukutu and all that. The women are caregivers. They can manage and invest these monies in their trade, in their businesses. The, did you mention the, an example of pumping the machine? That's a beautiful example. But let me even tell you that, even like, uh, I just heard recently that the vulcanizers on the roadside, that the machine, that machine doesn't cost more than 40000 or 45000 And th that is what some people use to train their children to schools. The vulcanizers, that is how they raise money every day and train their children to school. So if you know how many what people go around in small villages borrowing for, prof for, for with interest, some borrow 10000 naira for you to return twelve, to go and put in their tomatoes business. Some borrow twenty for you to return 25 you can imagine. So this is, a, this is a huge, a huge infusion into the economy. And it's not going to be top or middle of the economy that the money will hang there. The president is pumping this money straight to the grassroots to reflect, to reflect the economy at that level. So please, uh, let us not uh, confuse with other programs. It's not borrowing. They're not borrowing. This is their money. They should go. They will work, but they will go and invest it and spend it the way they want. Thank you very much. Uh, we have put all that behind us. Um, we have just properly understood the roles we have to play, uh, all, all parties in this uh, matter. So we put that we're working harmoniously. The whole, the whole uh, intention of everybody, all the actors in this uh, program now, both the National Assembly, the Executive, and is just to ensure the, the success of this program. Because at the end of the day, it is our own constituents that will, that will enjoy and benefit from this program. There are ordinary Nigerians that will benefit. There's no Nigerian that is greater than the other Nigerian. I hope you understand. No Nigerian. So it doesn't mean that because a Nigerian is coming from a minister or from the DG, that Nigerian is greater than the Nigerian coming from you. So if anybody says he won't participate and all that, it's the Nigerian. It's just people who say they won't participate. It is not them that will get the money. They are Nigerians, people within their state. So when a state governor says, I will not participate, it does not mean that the people in that state will not benefit. It's a federal government project. All he's saying in that situation is that he will not nominate and recommend certain persons. It's, it's a privilege, not a right. But the people in that state will benefit. But somebody cannot hold the federal government to ransom to say, I will not participate on you, give me so-so and so numbers. There can be flexibility as we go on here, and there's nothing cast in stone, depending on local circumstances. But like I said, that is not the main aim of this program. The main aim of this program is not about slot or no slot. The main aim of this program is for Nigerians, 1,000 1, per local government, to get the benefit of a federal government program to alleviate poverty. That's all. That's all. Thank you. 52 billion naira. 52 billion naira. 446.6 billion is for the payment of their salary, their stipends. The rest, logistics, ICT, transportation, printing, uh, provision of working tools, and the rest of them. So over 80% of the money is going for the payment of their stipends. 90% is going for the payment of their stipends. Uh, part of what government intend to achieve as far as this program is concerned is the issue of bringing jobs.
to teaming unemployed youth, more especially at the grassroots level. At the grassroots level, we are bringing jobs to their doorsteps. And by so doing, by so doing, you have reduced issue of rural to open migration. And I believe you can agree with me. Issue of unemployment, poverty, if you can take care of the periphery, it is very easy for you to control the center. I tell you what, to you and me, 60,000 Naira is nothing. But the fact that we in the NDE, under rural employment promotion, that's where we go to the grassroots. As far as our program of needs, microeconomic enhancement scheme is, I'm telling you, over 80% of our mothers in the rural areas that are doing businesses, their capital is no more than 5,000 Naira, and they survive by it. Somebody selling Soho, somebody selling Kunuzaki, somebody selling Fried Accra, and the rest of them. Tinko, and that's the reason why we did not put age limit. We said once you are a Nigerian, 18 years and above, because we know our target. We know our target. Let us wait and see. I believe you will definitely give us a positive reporting as far as this program is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you.